Welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Professor Shushmita Basuma Jumdar from the Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta. Today, in this course, Indian Culture, the subject is Indian Numismatics, and the module which you will be learning today is Pre Satavahana Coins and Currency Systems. So, let us learn a little about the Pre Satavahana Coins. So the first important term here is Satavahanas. As we know that the Satavahanas ruled in Deccan in the early historic phase. So pre-Satavana is a term which has been coined by scholars, numismatists and historians in the context of Deccan and for the first time Nilakantha Shastri in his book entitled A History of South India mentioned that the Satavahanas succeeded the Mauryas. The term pre-Satavahana generally is designated as a time period between the Mauryas and the Satavahanas. But in other sense, it can also be taken as a phase before the coming of the Satavahanas. So we will have to learn a little about the polity in Deccan to understand the coins and currency pattern. Specifically, this time is taken as a time between the Mauryas and the Satavahanas, that is 3rd century BCE or 2nd century BCE to 1st century BCE. B.D. Chattopadhyay has put forward the theory of the presence of localities and locality nuclei. Deccan had several localities which were tied to locality nuclei or had at the apex a locality nuclei. So these are basically clan based polities. So while explaining what is a locality nuclei, Chattopadhyay gives the example of the Bhatti Prolu relic casket wherein you find Kuberaka as a Rajan. At the same time, Kuberaka is also mentioned as the Pramukha of the Singha Goshti. So Goshtis are clans and these clans also had a leader and such among several Goshtis and leaders, you finally get a superior person who is the leader of several Goshtis. So this person is actually the Rajan. So giving his theory of the presence of such clan-based polities. Bidhi Chattopadhyay mentions that these are small localities in Deccan and these localities finally had a nuclei and the Satavahanas also rise out of such a system of polity which is very very typical of Deccan. And when you look at the numismatic sources, you will see that the coins also circulated in small pockets in these localities. Even when the Satavahanas come to power, we find that the localities coexist with the Satavahanas. Now, let us learn a little more about the currency pockets and the pre-Satavahana phase. Among the pre-Satavahana coins, there are two types of coins. One is the uninscribed and the others are inscribed. So we can broadly divide them into uninscribed and the inscribed issues. Among the uninscribed cast copper coins and the uninscribed die struck coins, we see that these clearly preceded the inscribed coins, even those of the Satavahanas, in the sites like Brahmapuri, Chandravalli, Nevasa and Pawni, particularly in the excavated context. There are several pre-Satavahana coins issued by the rulers who are otherwise not known from any other source. The Satavahanas are seen ruling over territories where local rulers having Bhadra, Mitta, Datta and Sena name endings. So these rulers are basically local rulers who preceded the Satavahanas in small localities. Apart from all the local currency, the silver punch mark coins of the Mauryas were very much in circulation during the 
post Mauryan phase. So when we think about the pre Satavahana phase, it's basically a post Mauryan phase in Deccan. Though when we look at the theory of Nilkantha Shastri, we see that he has mentioned that just after the Mauryas in Deccan, we find the Satavahanas. But now from the excavated context, this has become very clear that after the Mauryas, there was a distinct pre satavana phase and then the Satavahanas come to power. Now coming to the localities, let us visit the locality of Vidarbha which was issuing coins and very significantly the coins of Vidarbha have been minted by punching technique which is multiple archaic die striking technique. So you use multiple dice to mint these coins. And one of the symbols out of the five which you have on these coins of Vidarbha has the name of the ruler, which is very strange. So you do not have five symbols on them, but you have four symbols and the name of the ruling power. So ancient Bhogavardhana, that is modern Bhokardhan in Aurangabad district of present state of Maharashtra has yielded coins bearing the Ujjain symbol on them. This Ujjain symbol is the royal symbol of the Satavahanas. These coins are made of copper or of lead. The layers from which the coins have been reported are dated to third 2nd century BCE. Ajay Mitra Shastri places them in the pre Satavahana frame. So, with the writings of Ajay Mitra Shastri, actually we are introduced to the pre Satavahana phase in a very distinct fashion. The inscribed pre Satavahana coins have been reported from Malwa region in Madhya Pradesh, Telangana region in Andhra Pradesh, Vidarbha in Maharashtra. Now, the city issues of Tagara, that is modern Tate in the Usmanabad district of Maharashtra, were also pre Satavahana issues. We also have Sevaka coins where you get the title Sevaka. This coin series forms a distinct part of the pre Satavahana phase. Very interestingly, it does not have any bearing on the Satavahana coinage. So you do not get any connection between the Saivaka coins and the Satavahana coins. Now let us move to the next issue. We have to understand the monetary history of Deccan. So in order to understand the monetary history of Deccan, one has to take several things into account. Though there are a number of sites which have yielded coins from pre Satavahana layers, but these are not sufficient for understanding the monetary history of the then Deccan on the whole. So, numismatic issues at least indicate that there was a distinct pre Satavahana phase and the Satavahanas imitated the coins which were circulating in the pre satavahana phase so a very distinct character of the satavahana coinage is that they had been imitating the coins which were in circulation in such localities in the pre satavahana phase just to maintain the continuity so we will come to this issue later when we talk about the satavahanas in a different module the early historic sites of Tripuri, Vidarbha, Vidisha, Kotlingala, etc. have yielded a number of local pre Satavahana coins with specific symbols as their own identity marks, which have been imitated by the Satavahanas in the later period. Both at Vidarbha and Vidisha, we find the use of archaic multiple die striking or punching technique for minting coins in the pre Satavahana phase. As I have explained earlier that the issues of Vidarbha were minted with punching technique. So were the issues of Vidisha but there is a major difference between these two because when you look at the coins of Vidarbha you find that the technique which was used was very similar to that of the punch mark coins but when you look at the coins of Vidisha they are more organized and 
though they are done with multiple dies but the device looks like a single device here you can see that the local rulers of vidisha like damabhadra bhumidatta narayana mitra etc issued multiple die struck copper coins as i had already mentioned that we find rulers with name endings mitra datta and bhadra and we also get seners so here you have seen that the damabhadra coin had a bhadra name ending bhumi datta's coin had a datta name ending and narayan mitra's coin had a mitra name ending so all of them were actually ruling in the region of vidisha which is now in madhya pradesh the coins bear a tree in railing a triangle headed standard within train railing a terrain and the name of the ruler as separate punches so these have been placed on the coin using separate punches but when you see the coin here you find that it's a whole device almost arranged in a particular fashion and the coins issued by the satavahanas in this region which has been placed below you can see it and these have been modeled just imitating the type which was circulating in vidisha so this is a typical feature of the satavahana phase so the pre satavahana phase almost continues in the satavahana issues only the name of the satavahana ruler and the royal symbol of the satavahanas that is the ujjain symbol were added and rest of the device and fabric of the coin remains the same so when you look at the coins of the satavahanas you cannot identify them very easily because they just resemble the coins of vidisha like the local ruler of vidisha now what is the major difference once again i repeat the major difference will be the ujjain symbol which is the royal symbol of the satavahanas and very interestingly the ujjain symbol has been merged with the torayan symbol here pre satavahana coins of vidarbha which we had been discussing were issued by local rulers like damabhadra kanha mitra dharmabhadra surya mitra etc the vidarbha region was under the mitras and the bhadras and it was later occupied by the satavahanas as already mentioned they were issuing coins with punching technique and very significant are the coins of surya mitra because he was the last ruler to issue pre satavahana coins in vidarbha so his coins were actually restruck by the satavahanas particularly the restriking was done by sri satakarni which clearly mentions that this area was occupied from surya mitra or from his successor by satakarni so at vidarbha we find that the satavahana phase begins after surya mitra's reign and the pre satavahana ends with surya mitra's reign the pre satavahana coins issued by rulers like swami gopa gobhadra from kotlingala are very very significant because this is a very distinct pre satavahana phase at kotlingala so when you look at the pre satavahana phase in tekken and even beyond you get the coins of vidisha and after that you get the coins of vidarbha and coming down to kotlingala you find that these were very distinct pre satavahana pockets and here you get the names like swami gopa gobhadra which are very important rulers local rulers of the kotlingala region who issued coins and on their coins you find bow and arrow which is placed beside the six arm symbol the coins of kamavaya city srivaya and narana from kotlingala are also pre satavahana issues so on your left you can see the coin issued by swami gopa and on your right you can see another coin where you have a very distinct ujjain symbol this coin clearly has the name of simuka so it's a continuation of the pre satavahana phase and how the satavahanas were issuing coins in the kotlingala region 
From the early historic phase of Tripuri near Jabalpur of the present state of Maharashtra, you get a set of coins which has a human figure on them. So these are typically coins of Tripuri. So uh, Tripuri is in Madhya Pradesh and you get a set of coins from here which have the human figure on them. And these coins are typically pre-Satavahana coins of the locality of Tripuri. It is very significant to note that the coins of Tripuri were also imitated by the Satavahanas. And here on your right you can see the coin of Tripuri being imitated by the Satavahanas with the human figure. And this coin clearly reads Sri Satasa. The Satavahanas copied the same device on their coins which they had issued for this region. So it's the continuity of the pre-Satavahana coinage or imitation of the pre-Satavahana series once the locality was captured or was annexed to the Satavahana territory. So in numismatics, we do not have sudden changes. So the changes are very gradual because it is the case of money. So whatever is circulating actually continues for some more time and then a major change is introduced. This is done because of trade. To make the trade run in a proper manner or without any disturbance, usually the coin types are continued. Now let us move to the upper Mahanadi region. Here we find a locality in Chhattisgarh region which is the territory of Malhar. And this region is very significant because this region was issuing coins from 1st century BC to 4th century AD and if not at least 3rd century AD. You find that in the upper Mahanadi valley the coins of Malhar were circulating and a typical character of these coins is that they are dynastic come city issues. Just to mention them that they come from the city of Malhar or from the urban locality of Malhar a particular symbol was used and this symbol almost resembles the Brahmima though this is not a Brahmima but this region maintained its own identity and was not under the Satavahanas. Several Satavahana coins have also been reported from the site of Malhar. But up to 3rd century AD, the site was continuously issuing coins of its own. Now let us see some coins of Malhar region. Here you find the rulers like Silalusiri, Achadasiri, Dharmabhadra in the first phase that is 1st century BC to 1st century AD they have been issuing coins and then you find a very significant dynasty that is the Maghas of Kosala region. So these are different from the Maghas of Kosambi. They issued coins and there were nine Magha rulers. Then you find a different phase altogether where you have coins of Silalusiri and you have the coins of Bhalika. And finally a new type emerges that is elephant DT type. So in this whole phase you find that at least four different dynasties or powers were ruling. Now on your left you can see a Panchmark coin which has the typical Malhar symbol on it and the second coin is the coin of Maghashri and rest of the Magha rulers that is Shiva Magha, then Siddhya Magha, Paramagha and all have been displayed here. Now this is a very significant coin which was previously identified as a Satavahana coin of Apelaka but this belongs to a local ruler called Shivasri Silalukasa that also has a Malhar symbol and the last phase is the elephant DT series as I have mentioned. Initially these coins were inscribed and gradually they turn into uninscribed series. So this locality of Malhar also maintained its identity along with the Satavahana. So it's a pre-Satavahana and a continuity of the Satavahana phase where the locality is maintaining its own identity. Now the Ratikas and the Bhojakas are very important groups. The Ratikas and the Bhojakas are mentioned in the Mauryan inscriptions, particularly the inscriptions of Ashoka. And we find 
the elevated status of the ratikas and bhojakas wherein they become maharathis and mahabhojas and they you shoot several coins so we get the coins of the ratikas and the bhojakas rather maharathis and mahabhojas in the pre satavahana phase and a very typical character of deccan is that when the satavahanas are ruling contemporary with the satavahanas we get the coins of the rathikas that is the maharathis and mahabhojas so they rule simultaneously with the satavahanas so this is actually the locality ruler who is a maharathi and a mahabhoj the maharathis and the mahabhojas are examples of such pre satavahana powers who were also contemporary of the satavahanas and maintained their locality status in pockets where such ratika or bhojaka rulers ruled alongside the satavahanas in archaeological excavations and explorations a number of local coins of maharathi families have been recorded which for the first time introduced them as a ruler of those localities among them the kuras of brahmapuri and belgaum anandas and sadakanas of banavasi sadars of vardhamanu hathis of virapuram etc were major powers they also used royal title like rajan raya rayo which definitely suggests an elevated status but when you look at these coins you find three stages initially they are ratikas and bhojakas then they are maharathis and mahabhojakas then they start using the titles like raya rajan etc so the three stages are very very distinct when you look at the two coins displayed here you find the coins of the kuras who were also maharathis So the Mahabhojas of Konkan region played important role in the history of the coastal Deccan. Besides numismatic specimens, they also may, are mentioned in more than one inscriptions from popular Buddhist sites, particularly cave sites of Kuda, situated in the Raigad district of present-day state of Maharashtra. The coins of Mahabhojas bear the name of the rulers like Mahabhoja Sadakara Sudassana. महाभोज सादगेरी कोसीपुत सुदर्शन महाभोज वासीटीपुत शिवमा एंड मामदव शिवमा एक्सेट्रा सो द महाभोज आर फाउंड रूलिंग इन द लोकैलिटी ऑफ द कोस्टल ट्रैक्ट ऑफ द वेस्टर्न कोस्ट पर्टिकुलरली एंड दे हैव द सिंबल ऑफ अ टोटल और अ टोटोइज ऑन देयर कॉइन so on the mahabhoja coins we find the depiction of a tortoise which is actually their symbol the symbol of their locality so on the reverse of the coins of the mahabhojas at times you find the ujjain symbol which is the royal emblem of the satavahanas and at other times you also find that on the reverse there is a thunderbolt which is actually the royal symbol of the shakas so the mahabhojas are seen shifting their allegiance once to the satavahanas and at times to the shakas so the shakas and the satavahanas were actually the contenders in the deccan region so what i want to say here is that the mahabhojas were the locality rulers of the western coast and they maintained their identity as a locality in the pre satavahana phase and also in the satavahana phase which is very very significant this suggests that the mahabhojas shifted their allegiance once to the satavahanas and then to the shakas the numismatic evidence here indicates toward a political contestation if pre satavahana is taken as a period between the decline of the mauryas and the rise of the satavahanas then mainly five prominent localities that is vidisha vidarbha tripuri kotlingala and malhar are seen as issuing their own locality coinages so pre satavahana phase is very distinct in all these five localities so if we are tracing localities in the pre satavahana phase these five places emerge as very very significant 
localities and besides these we have other localities as well and along with them we have the ratikas and the bhojakas most of these coin types were imitated by the satavahanas who occupied or extended their power over these localities for the sake of continuity of the metallic currency and smooth monetary transition the coinage was visually kept in sync or in other words imitated with the minor changes mainly the name of the ruler was changed and the addition of satavahana royal symbol was also introduced pre satavahana cannot be extended in all terms beyond the 1st century bc in any case but as already discussed a number of local dynasties which ruled in several pockets as contemporary powers of the satavahanas from whom the later occupied regions or localities one by one at different times are found in that region thus these regions or localities witness the pre satavahana phase at diverse temporal units pre satavahana cannot be taken as a homogeneous time frame in the region of deccan in the second case pre satavahana extended even up to the second century ce when minor dynasties and localities were gradually being brought under the satavahana fear of influence early historic deccan witnessed the process of secondary state formation wherein the satavahanas emerged as a major power Besides the Satavahanas, the Shakas were also ruling in portions of Deccan and were major contenders of the Satavahanas. The pre-Satavahana phase, as discussed till now, witnessed the rise of several localities and powers, among which the Maharathis and the Mahabhojas were the most prominent ones. The phase is marked by the issuance of large variety of copper and lead coins, which were circulating in the small regions. and thus economy of the region is marked by currency pockets which is very significant in deccan and it's a typical feature of deccan where you find small currency pockets where in these coins were circulating and you do not find such coins in the other currency pockets so when the satavahanas will come to power in these regions they will continue the currency pockets at the same time they also introduce their own kind of currency which can be called universal and this will be discussed in the satavahana coins and currency system module so you have to follow that module to know more about the satavahana so we have seen till now that pre satavahana is a phase in deccan when we talk about deccan it is mentioned as dakshinapatha and that is the region which is to the south of the vindhyas and at times you find the pre satavahana coins circulating in the region of madhya pradesh particularly in vidisha and tripuri which we had seen so this was another region which has a distinct pre satavahana phase but we have mentioned it along with tekken only for the reason that we find that the satavahanas continued to rule here and they continued to issue the same type of coins which were circulating in this region of vidisha and tripuri so from vidisha tripuri kotlingala then we come to the locality of malhar which had its identity of its own though it was not issuing any coins and finally in deccan we have the ratikas and the bhojakas who issued coins as maharathis and mahabhojas so this comes up as a very typical kind of a coinage pattern of currency pockets in deccan and the satavahanas are seen as a evolving power maintaining the localities and also maintaining their own power so to learn more and to continue as a sequel to learn about the satavahanas do join in to the course on satavahanas on epg patshala thank you very much for learning about the pre satavahana phase with me thank you